Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. You know, I've always hated the miter gauge that came with my table saw, so I finally went out and purchased a new one at Incra, and today we're going to set that up. Now one of the things that I liked about this version is it has this extended fence which I use quite often uh, rather than just the, the plain miter gauge. So let's open it up. I expect there's some parts that we'll have to put together on it and I'm not going to make you sit through all of that. I'll sort of go through and uh, install what I need to. Well that's interesting. It looks like it's actually all together. The first thing that we need to do is to make sure, and I don't know if you can hear it, but that fence is moving back and forth in there. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that this bar is not moving in there because we can't get an accurate enough cut if this bar is moving back and forth. So the first thing I need to do first, you can see that this is actually going to cut off my um, fence here. So the first thing we need to do is to remove this uh, and just slide that out of the way for now. And what's going to happen eventually here, we're going to get access. There's another one of these back down behind here. So I'm just going to start tightening these. And it says to tighten the two front ones first of all, and then the back ones. Okay, I've taken up any little bit of slackness in that. The next thing I want to do now is put the fence back together. And I want to make sure... I'm going to, going to raise my blade just a little bit because I, I want to set this now so that when I'm at a, no matter what angle I'm at, that fence is not going to interfere with my blade. And there's the critical part right there. And they give you this long screwdriver affair. One of the things that they do give you is one of these little T-mount. I'll show you what they look like. So there's the very front of my miter slot and you can see there's a little T-slot there and I've just temporarily installed that little clip in there and it's just a screw on the top and the purpose of this is so that that miter gauge can't flip up there. Now these little T-slot adapters, they frustrate a lot of people um, because, and the main reason is because when you're putting them in, some of them are difficult to put in. You have to line them up with the slot here uh, and, then, and then push it in. But look, here's a simple, easy way of installing these and the correct way of doing it. You don't start here and push them in. You go to the end of your slot, you drop it down, and look at how easy that is. No frustration, it just slips right in there. To take it out, you do the same thing. Now the next thing I want to check, uh, they say that this is aligned at 90 degrees at the factory, and I'm sure it is. And they also say if, if for some reason yours is off, you can align it to the blade. And I don't think they actually mean the blade. I never ever align a miter gauge to a blade and here's why. Some blades have a fairly thick carbide and sometimes when you put a square on there you're on the carbide on one end but you're not on carbide at the other end so what happens is instead of the square being flush against the blade it's actually twisted a tiny bit so we never do that and anytime I'm aligning anything on the table saw. Everything on a table saw is aligned to the miter slots. The blade is aligned to the miter slots. Uh, the miter gauge is aligned to the miter slots. And this is no different. So what I'm doing, I'm taking the far miter slot. I'm putting my, uh, my uh, square at a little bit of an angle. And when I look down, and I can actually feel it scraping and, and it is in fact, in my case, it is actually set. Now before I start working on the top here, remember I said I just uh, snugged these down a little bit. I'm going to loosen them off just ever so slightly and I think that will move. Now what I want to do, it doesn't say to do this in the manual, but I can tell when I'm 
moving this back and forth, it's scraping, and I can actually see it scraping. I'm just going to put a little thin veneer under there, under this side here, and I'm going to back that off just a little bit more and snug that down, and I think when I do that, and now I'm going to tighten it so that it's permanent, and now when I move that veneer, hopefully that's not going to... yeah, that's better. It's just lifted it just enough so that I can't hear it scraping there, so that's good. Now the next thing I'm going to set up and install is this little, what they call a flip top uh, stop. And you won't be able to see this, well maybe you can. Uh, if you look on there you'll see that there's some very fine teeth and there's also some matching teeth. Again, you may not be able to see, but there's also matching teeth on this. And the idea of this and it's got some nylon screws at the back here, so the point of this little stop is to be able to put this on there, and those little teeth, you don't have to tighten this down very hard, it's just enough to hold it, and these little teeth then stop that from moving, so that, for example, if you're wanting to cut a piece of wood, and grab something here, and you want to use sort of a consistent cutting, um, you can do, for example, if you're making doors, you can keep using this little stop on here because right on here there's a little adjustable arm and I'm going to show you more on that in a moment. But before I do that, one of the nice things about this kind of a system, and one the reason I picked this one is it will allow me to do good quality picture frames. So there's that little flip stop installed, and when you don't want to use it, you can just flip it right out of the way and it doesn't interfere with anything. But when you do want to use it, when it flips down, if you'll notice that right next to the where they come together, there's no gaps, there's actually ridges, and the purpose of the ridges is so that when you're doing something like a picture frame and you're putting the point, the point will not actually be able to slip underneath in any way because it, it can only butt right up to that. And this, this little stop has a couple of, it has the bar which is installed on it right now, and that bar, of course, can be moved back and forth. Take that out of there for right now. So there's your first cut, right? Where is it? There's your first cut. So there's this, the, the closest to the saw blade. Then you can flip that up, and then you can do a second cut there without making any changes. And of course, you can move these bars back and forth. So there's a look at the back of the miter gate so you can see what I've been looking at here. And the other thing that I liked about this one is it has a fence extension. I've just released this little bolt here and you can see, let me move this back here, you can see that it goes out quite far. I'll pull it so that it comes right to the end there and it'll, it'll actually pull right out if you go too far. Let me take a moment to show you the back of what this miter gauge looks like. And the way it works, you can see these little grooves cut out, little V grooves cut out of everything. And there's this little moving part here that when you release the handle and release this, you can move this so that you can lock it into any particular angle that you want where there is a groove, of course, and if there isn't a groove, you can still lock it into any other place. And this little part at the back here that moves, you can see that this moves back and forth as well. Apparently with this, you can actually move half degrees, so it's a very, very accurate miter gauge. I'm pretty happy with it and I like the way it locks in there. Uh, you lock it back here and you lock it here and that's not going to move at all. A very solid miter gauge. I'm looking forward to using it. When we do these sorts of things, um, I always use a steel square. I see people using these tri-squares all the time and you know what? Um, unless you've paid $150 or $200 for a tri-square, they may not be accurate. I found out the hard way that if you buy inexpensive ones, they're not always accurate. And this one, when I put this on here, yep, sure enough, it's off just enough. This one is showing me that it's right on, but my big square, 
that I've spent a lot of time making sure that it's absolutely square. This is the one that I really want to check with. And you know what? I can't rely on a little tiny piece of wood like this. So what I'm going to do, because I bought this to do larger pieces than just little ones, and little ones is pretty easy to be pretty close or accurate within, you know, uh, a couple thousandth of an inch. It's longer pieces that make a big difference. So I'm going to prepare a longer piece uh, and then we'll check it and see how accurate this square is. Okay, well, let's check this and see. There's the arrow. That was the side that was against the fence. And yeah, that's perfect. End to end. That, in fact, that board is 12 inches wide. So that's perfect. That's excellent. You know, I was just checking the weight of this with the fence and the attachments, and it's still less. <laughs> <laughs> than my old miter gauge. Um, but that concludes my video for today on setting up and checking the uh, Ancra miter gauge. I'm pretty happy with it so far. So uh, later on down the line when I've had uh, a few months to try it out, we'll check back and see if I still like it. But so far I really like it. Um, and a friend of mine has a boat. And <laughs> I wonder if he's looking for a boat anchor because <laughs> this would be perfect for him. So I'm Colin Kadad for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.